Thank you. Um, this week, you've been very unequivocal about your support for a policy which has come to be known as sex self ID. Um, the idea that whether someone is a man or a woman is basically down to a matter of them saying, you know, saying what they are and going through an administrative process. So I wanted to ask you, given um, the growing number of sex offenders, such as someone like Christopher Wharton, who is um, a male sex offender, who's a, he's a child rapist, who was convicted last year of which you called, who's already convicted of being of multiple child rape, who is now claiming to be a woman, Given that we know there's a growing number of these men, I've got three questions. Should his crimes be recorded, as he would wish, as being committed by a woman? Should, be, should he be accommodated in a women's or a men's prison? prison? And should women in the Labour Party be seen as a hate group if we raise questions like this? Um, okay, let me try, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna take them in order if that's all right. And I'll start with this question about the Gender Recognition Act because, um, and I'm, excuse me for taking a bit of time over this, but I want to treat it with care because I think it deserves careful language and most of all, a bit more light and a bit less heat than we've managed to have in this debate so far. So uh, the questions that you asked were about whether cri the, the crimes of a particular person should be recorded as by a woman or a man. And I, I, believe, I believe fundamentally in people's right to self-ID and I believe that the Gender Recognition Act strikes the wrong balance in relation to that. So I think that crimes that are recorded should be recorded as that person wishes, having gone through that process, received support um, and self-identified. Um, you asked about whether people, trans people should be in women's or men's prisons. Well, I think trans women are women and I think trans men are men. So I think that they should be accommodated in the prisons of their choosing. Um, and do, you, do I think that women in the Labour Party who raise questions about this should be expelled? No, I don't. I, why, I do you think sign that pledge? That, why did you sign the pledge? I'll, I'll, I'll explain. About Women's Place UK. I'll, I'll explain. Because um, I do think that a meaningful dialogue and the widest possible dialogue about something that is deeply emotive and deeply sensitive to people is really, really important. But I think if you deny the right of trans people to exist, and you deny their very basic human rights, then it, it, there no meaningful dialogue is possible at all. And that is one of the reasons why I have a fundamental disagreement with the statements and aims of that organisation and of other organisations that cause deep, deep hurt to people who have the right to have their existence recognised. Now let me just say this as well, is that I represent a town with one of the highest domestic violence rates in the country and have done for 10 years. So I am very, very acutely aware of the need for safe spaces for women, particularly women who are at risk, who are of a threat of violence or of harm, who may no longer be at risk but feel that they are and need to have that taken seriously and dealt with and addressed. And I think these are serious questions that deserve a serious debate. When I worked at the charity centre point, we had to put a lot of thought and time into the policies and practices in our hostels to make sure that we kept people safe, young people, in our hostels from others who would seek to do them harm. At the time, that often played out around violence against women, and girls, but it also played out around things like the fact that we had um, Ethiopian and Eritrean refugees being admitted to our hostels at the time. And we had to make sure that former child soldiers who'd been on other sides of that conflict were safe in our hostels and that nobody came to any harm. And I think that <coughs> it cannot be beyond our collective wit to take the heat out of this to accept that the job is not to pit some women against other women, but to work together constructively in order to keep people safe. And that is the approach that I take, and it's the approach that I've always taken, towards women in my constituency who are desperately concerned about male violence, and towards um, the young girl who I'm currently supporting in my constituency, who's been going through this Gender Recognition Act process for the last two years. The waiting times are awful. The bullying and the discrimination is awful, and an act which was meant to provide more support to young people in her situation has actually made it worse for her and made it harder. 
That is why I've taken the stand that I've taken. I'm always willing to discuss it and debate it with people, but on that very fundamental aspect, that that young person is going to hear nothing from me in this contest that gives her any idea that she has anything other than my complete and utter compassion and support, I will not move. on the windows of when Women's Face UK had a meeting. Why did none of you speak out about that if, you're, if you wanted to take the heat and have more light in the debate? Genuinely did, didn't you know. You didn't know, but it was talked about at a conference. But, but I'm happy to talk to you about it. I mean, you know, look, this is, a, this is a... You know, I've been at meetings for the last few years, particularly in the Labour Party, the last four years in particular, where almost every issue has become a flashpoint and immediately the room has had to divide into one side or other. And what I feel happens at those moments, I've always felt it, whatever the issue, is that most people have nowhere to go. Because this polarised politics, I think, just does not reflect the reality of the country that we live in and the reality of the values most people have. And we have far more in common, as my friend Joe once said, than that which divides us. I want us to become that Labour Party again. And that's why I'm grappling with these questions and I'm engaging with these issues. And look, I won't always get it right on all of those issues. I haven't always got it right. And I'll reserve the right to change my mind. But that's what I ask of everybody else here in this movement too. That is the sort of debate that I believe in. And when I say I believe in a, a Labour Party that is united, I do not mean for a moment that I believe in a Labour Party that is uniform. We have to be able to challenge one another constructively and decently. That is how we get these great reforming Labour governments of these broad teams that have reach into every part of our country and can hear what is happening in different parts of our coalition. That's the Labour Party I believe in and I'm prepared to go out and fight for it.